next we're going to look at render and render is very stylized it doesn't affect a photograph per se it actually generates new images based or textures really based on what you choose clouds for instance if we let's say we take let's pick some colors here like some browns and click on the black here and choose maybe a lighter actually let's add a little more diversity here make this one just a little darker okay so we have our foreground and background color being this tan and this brown and if I come up to filter choose render and clouds it creates clouds okay now what's cool about this is that you can actually use this as the foundation for creating all kinds of interesting effects like antique looking paper and those kinds of things and if you use clouds in conjunction with difference clouds difference clouds basically inverts the selection okay it turns all the values into negatives and if you apply it a second time it switches them back but something interesting starts to happen as you go back and forth and back and forth you'll notice that you end up with these little ribbons of color that show up that gives it a little bit more detail so let me switch back and forth another time difference clouds difference clouds so now it's even more pronounced so you can see where these cool effects are starting to happen and then you can use other filters like the Gaussian blur for instance to smooth it out a little bit more you can uh, go to your filter gallery and apply perhaps a dry brush okay and then if we were to reapply say difference clouds so just by playing back and forth you can actually create some pretty interesting random almost effects just by using some of the different filters that are available to you here that you can use for backgrounds for designs and and all of that matter of fact a lot of the backgrounds that I use I create using some of the methods that I'm showing you here like if we apply a motion blur for instance and let me show you an interesting trick with motion blur since we're here I'm gonna take this filter or this image that we we're creating and add noise to it well maybe not that much something like that and keep it monochromatic and then filter blur motion blur and I'm going to increase this 200% and so now look what happens we end up with what really appears somewhat like wood grain okay and if we apply that a second time it just smooths it out and emphasizes the effect and then we can go back to some of our distort tools that we were looking at earlier like zigzag and turn down the effect just so that it's very subtle so now you're creating the appearance of wood just by using a couple filters okay so um, so that's kind of fun isn't it actually let's just make a copy of that so we can continue to experiment so uh, the next uh, render filter that we're going to look at is fibers and this basically takes your colors that you have and makes it look like fibers just like it says that it does and uh, you can control the strength and all of that uh, randomize can give you some interesting effects but overall if I hit OK that's basically what it does and it's all based on the colors that are in the background so if you apply fibers for instance to the owl well actually 
it applies it based on your foreground and background colors. So I was incorrect there. But what's really cool is you can also use this with some of the techniques that we just looked at to create, you know, some of your wood shapes. Like for instance, we could apply a uh, blur, motion blur, change it to drop the distance down a bit, hit OK. And so now you can see the before and after. So again, another way of achieving some pretty cool results. And then also under render, we have lens flare, which is basically that. It adds a lens flare to anything you're doing, just like if you're taking a picture into the sun. And it's very realistic, as you can see. And last but not least, under render, we have lighting effects, which you can really do some cool stuff with based on the type of choice you make. Like we can choose a light point. Um, you can affect color and brightness. We can colorize the light. Gloss and metallic just really control how it appears. We could change this to infinite, so it really brightens everything up. Spotlight. And there's also different kinds of presets that you can add. Like you can, you can see here where you have, uh, say, five lights down. And the lights are here, so you can actually adjust each light individually. Okay. Uh, so you can make one of the, like the one in the middle, you can colorize it to blue or red. And so it'll slightly adjust it. And so just by using the lighting, you can get a lot of extra effects as well. You can also adjust them as well. Add new lights if you want, just by clicking here on whatever kind of light that you want. Like if you want to add in a new spotlight, you can just click and it'll enter it here. And if you decide, you know, I don't really like what I want, you can reset everything. Or change it up here as well. And it goes back to presets. So again, it's kind of a specialty type of application, but there may be some cases where it would make sense for you to actually add a little bit of drama to something that you're working on just by using the lighting function. Now, the next thing that we have is uh, sharpen and stylize. These are the two that are remaining. Sharpen, we don't need to spend a lot of time on just because it does what you think it's going to do. It, its whole purpose is to sharpen an image. And so let's say, let's just blur our owl here just slightly like we were talking about previously. I can use uh, some of the sharpen filters to snap up the image. And sharpen and sharpen more are subtle. They have no controls. I usually use either smart sharpen or unsharp mask because I have a little bit more control over the end result. So you can see like I can choose the amount And you'll notice the preview, if I turn the preview off, it actually is affecting the image. And you can control remove noise as well, which is a, a very handy feature, especially if you're working with a low resolution image. So there's before and there's after. So you can see that it's definitely improving the overall image and adding detail back into it. And if I hit OK, I want to remind you of where we started off. 
before we apply the original Gaussian blur. This image here is a lot sharper, but it's also very pixelized. You notice, like, look at the owl's eyes, and you know, even the fur kind of looks funky. But look at the after effect after we blurred it slightly and applied Smart Sharpen, it really improved the overall image by a lot. Okay, the other option that we have is Unsharp Mask, and it works very similarly to Smart Sharpen except it handles it in a different way. So I can increase the amount of sharpness and radius just like before, but it handles it all more on a global fashion rather than preserving edges, which is something that Smart Sharpen does. But still a pretty decent end result that you can get compared to where we were. But I think in many cases, especially if you're using it on photographs, Smart Sharpen is usually your better bet. Okay. And uh, last but not least, let's look real briefly at uh, Stylize. Diffuse, again, it's just a basic filter you can use to achieve a, s a specific effect. Kind of like if you're looking at an object through frosted glass or diffused glass. That's really the effect that it provides. Emboss, extrude. A lot of these are ones that you probably wouldn't use. They're very stylized and specific. Uh, but I want to look at wind. Wind is another motion blur kind of effect. And you can control how much it's being applied, like stagger. You know, it looks like the uh, owl is being dematerialized or something, which is kind of cool with the motion blur that we looked at.